Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a lot. So in this code, I ask my user for her name. Nothing to check about a name. People can call themselves whatever they want. We're going forever. And I ask for some money. Now here I'm breaking the rule. It's a, it's a guide not to put anything in here that will break. Input never breaks unless the user forces it to break. And then heck with that. We don't do anything about that. Float might break and we'd want to catch that. So we are catching a value error on taking the float of the number. Now here, instead of saying else break, I said break. Well, break can't break. It's just a keyword. So here, this exception to the very good rule, I'm okay with it. But do what you think is best. So now we have a float money and a string name, and I put them in curly braces, but I do money divided by two, and that gives me half of the money. But this time, after the what I want the interpreter to interpret and stick in that spot in my string, I put a colon. Now, after the colon, I can put a specification for how I want the data, the datum to be presented. This specification is just like the specifications for the dot format method. So if you know that, you might really like to go to the F string so that your code is easier to read and write. Keep track of it. But this means, and we'll look at this in a minute, this means two places to the right of the decimal. And this facility of formatting will round. So that's very handy. This one, 30.2, if you did it, is interesting, kind of fun. So when you're a kid, you might say to your friend, think of a number between 1 and 10, and I'll tell you what it is. And whatever the, your friend thinks of, you're going to guess in the middle between 1 and 10. You're going to guess 5. And then when your playmate tells you, no, that's too high, then you're going to guess in the middle between the 5 and the 1. Three. And continue that process. And that process is called a binary search. And that is what we're going to do now in this code. And the important or the thing to remember when you have to make an algorithm that very often it's very easy to do in your head. You know just what to do. Even as a kid, nobody had to tell you how to do that. But what you have to do to write an algorithm is to, is to slow down your thinking so that you can hear each step and translate it to code. So we're going to do that. First we ask, think of a number between 1 and 10, and I'll try to guess it. Oh, but there's something to look at, interesting and useful. See that I did one string, then a comma, which puts in a space and then continued my string. And in that way, I got it all, even though it's going to look like one line coming out, it's going to be in two lines in my code. And so sometimes that's a useful technique. I start by setting that high and low, and I have to keep the number of guesses. Now this line of code, line 9, was suggested to me by a st brilliant student, of which there are many including you. And when the my playmate cheats and changes her number, then this becomes false. The low becomes higher than the high. So that's not good. So that's why that's there rather than a while true. Okay, every time through this loop, I add one to my guesses. And then I'm going to guess in the middle. Now notice here I am dividing with two division signs in Python. That means do the integer division. I'm going to get a whole number and whatever fractional part would really be there dropped away. If I do just one division sign, if there's a fractional part, it gets shown the answer will be a floating point. Ah, this is a big improvement 
I think, over other languages in the uh, earlier versions of Python. Okay, so we're going to be guessing this integer, and here I'm asking, and then we have a while true, and the block ends there. So here we have input, and you look at this string, and you see that these spaces are part of the output. Look at the new lines in all those spaces, and our user should say why or no. Well, I'm going to be generous and robust. I am looking at just the first character of what the user says. Hmm, that wasn't in my spec. Hmm. However, I'm looking at the first character to show you how readable this is, and we'll look at this facility very, very carefully soon. And I am looking at the lowercase version of that first character, also coming soon. And if that letter, that one character, is in YN, then I break out of this loop. Otherwise, I scold my friend and go around again. But if I break out of the loop, then I know I either have Y or N for my answer. And if it's Y, then I have guessed the answer and I give a report and I break out of the outer loop, I'm done. But if it is not Y, once again, I do a while true for forever and I'm asking them no, then please either press H for high and I report the guess that we got last time, it's very friendly, or L. And I look again at the first character, the lowercase version, it better be one of those. And if it is, I break, otherwise I scold and go around again. And if it's L, that means the number they gave me was too low. It cannot be that number, so it could be as little as that number plus one. So the low is now moved to that number plus one. Otherwise, it was too high, and the that high goes to that number minus one. Okay, well, that was a good exercise if you did it. I'll see you in the next lab.